Hey, this is Coach Boyston, and today we're going to be looking at passive transport. And specifically, we're looking at how things move, whether outside the cell or inside the cell, moving in or moving out. They're moving from areas where they're highly concentrated over into areas where their lower concentrations are occurring to create a balance. And for some of those, that means they can move right through our phospholipid bilayer. For other things, that means that they're a little larger and those molecules will need the help of what we call a transport protein to get in and out of the cell. The main thing I want you to understand here, though, about this process is when things move from areas of high concentration to low concentration, passive transport means zero energy is needed for this transport to happen in and out inside the cell. And the main name we give for passive transport is diffusion. It's things diffusing. So what is diffusion? Well, let's use my coffee example because I love coffee so much. In the morning, my coffee machine comes on. Well, when it initially comes on, it starts pouring that wonderful coffee. There is a very strong scent and aroma of wonderful coffee right around my coffee pot. Now, in my house, there is not a very high concentration of coffee smell anywhere else. So in my bathroom, not a high coffee smell. That'd be wonderful, though. Um, in my living room, yet yeah, nothing. All right, the high concentration is occurring right there around the coffee pot. Now, what is going to happen after about the next 10 to 15 minutes is those molecules that are highly concentrated around the coffee pot are going to diffuse. And they are going to spread out and throughout my whole house until my house smells like coffee. So they're going to keep spreading until they have equally distributed themselves throughout that entire room. So diffusion is the movement of particles from a high area of concentration out into areas of low concentration to create a balance. Uh, another image I like to use for this is this idea here. And let me kind of back it up a little bit. When you drop food coloring into a little bit of water, you'll notice that you have an area of high concentration right here where it was dropped. All right, these areas where there's none, you'll notice is considered a low concentration of whatever that is. And so in this case, food coloring. Well, you'll notice this food coloring, if we think of it as molecules of food coloring. All right, they're a real high concentration here. I can't draw any down here because the low concentration is so low, there's none. Well, those things are going to continue to disperse and diffuse and spread out all throughout this uh, cup until they're equally distributed. So they're moving from areas of high to low. There's no energy needed here for this process to happen. And if we let this thing play out, you'll notice it's going to continue to diffuse until obviously that whole cup is completely yellow. And this one's really, really close. This one is a little slow about it, but that's what we're looking at. And if you're not grasping this concept of no energy needed. I figure I'd take you to my uh, vacation time. This is a little home video action here. Um, a couple years ago, I was in Vegas, and right outside Vegas, there's some nice mountains right there next to the Hoover Dam, and they have this zip line tour you can go on. And you'll notice these people that went right before me here, they're, they're getting all saddled up here on the zip line. We're on the top of a mountain, and we are about to zip down a good mile, quarter of a mile of zip line, about 70 miles an hour, um, going from top, going down almost the bottom of the mountain. And so one thing I wanted to bring your attention to here is these things right here. You'll notice there is no motor there. There is no gas. There is no power. That thing is just pulleys sitting on a line. Diffusion, when we go from areas of high concentration to areas of low concentration, so we're up high here. These ladies are flying down right before me going down to that low. There's zero energy needed for that to happen. Now, if we were to come back up from the bottom to the top from a low to a high, that would require energy. Uh, I figured I'd throw this in here. This is me. I, I had the, the video camera strapped on me here, uh, just selling through. But again, I, I show you this as just a fun way to kind of talk about when things move from a high to a low, there's not going to be any energy needed for that to happen. All right, so let's go on. Enough home video. Uh, this is a picture of those mountain ranges where this flight line tour is. And I want you to notice, let's say here's my, my high peak here. Down here is my lower peak. And if we draw a line between those, we can see a nice little slope there. So when things move down this gradient, and when I say gradient, I'm talking about the difference in concentration. So let's say outside the cell, we had a high concentration of something. And inside the cell, there was a low concentration. Well, that is a gradient. That cell membrane is creating a gradient between the outside and inside environment. Things that move from a high to a low or diffuse is going to require no energy. 
And just like me going down that zip line requires zero energy to go from a high to a low. Now, like I said before, in a later screencast, we'll talk about a thing called active transport. When you go from a low to a high, that is going to require some energy. All right. So hopefully that helps you understand that concept a little better. Now, with diffusion and with passive transport, one of the most uh, readily available, most common molecules in our body is going to be this thing called H2O. And so when water moves from a high to a lower, diffuses in and out of the cell, we give it a name and you can see it down the bottom. We call it osmosis. And if you're looking at this picture here, you'll notice we can say there's a hundred percent concentration of water over here on the left. Over here on the right, there is not a hundred percent concentration of water. There's actually dissolved solute within that water, making the water concentration much lower. So let's say in this instance, the water concentration is about 45% over here. So where is the lower concentration? On the right. This kind of represents, this little membrane down the middle here, represents like our cell membrane. So water is going to want to move from where there's a higher concentration to where the water concentration is lower, it's just going to diffuse till it can create a balance between its internal and external environments. So if we wanted to say this is the outside of the cell and this is inside of the cell, water is going to move into the cell until it can create a balance. All right, so water is going to diffuse and when it does, we call it osmosis. And we can describe the environment around a cell as being one of three ways. We can describe it as hypertonic, hypotonic, or isotonic. Now to kind of help you a little better with these definitions, hyper and hypo specifically, iso is pretty easy. Let me bring up this image. Um, what you see in this picture is, you see this is the outside of our cell here. We have the inside here. The green things represent a solute that would be in the water, whereas the blue dots represent our water molecules. And you'll notice outside the cell here, we have a low amount of solute or a low number of these green molecules here. When there's a low solute content, we consider it hypotonic. So when you think hypo, think low. When you think hyper, think high. So we would describe this environment outside the cell as being hypo. So if it's a hypotonic solution, there's a low amount of solute, which means what is high? Well, water is high. So our H2O level is actually high when it's in a hypotonic solution. Um, we can see the interior of the cell here actually has a lot more um, solute. And because of that, um, if our environment was described as hypertonic, we're saying that there's a lot more solute. And if there's more solute content, meaning it's hypertonic, and that means there's less available room there for the water. Our concentration level of our water molecule is going to be low. And so in a hypotonic solution, like what you see here, the outside part of the cell here is actually hypotonic. Low amount of solute, meaning the water level is high. Water is going to move from that high to that low. And so water actually moves into the cell when a cell is in a hypotonic solution. So let's go back over here and let's look at each one of these specifically. Um, hypertonic solution. Hypertonic, we'll notice that water is going to move out of this cell. So why is it moving out of the cell? Take a look at my, my real image of my cell here. If we describe this environment on the outside of the cell as being hypertonic, we're saying that there is a high amount of other uh, molecules or solute. And if there's a high amount of solute, that means what about the water concentration? It means it is low. So if it is low, that means the concentration of water is going to be higher inside the cell. And what do we know about osmosis and diffusion? Passive transport. Things move from a high to a low. They diffuse from a high to a low without energy till they can create a balance. So water is going to, in a hypertonic solution, water is going to exit or move out of the cell. And if you slide up there to the word hypertonic, you'll notice hypertonic has an E. The way I remember hypertonic is, that E stands for exit. All right, so in a hypertonic solution, water is going to exit the cell. All right, let's slide down to hypotonic. Hypotonic is a little different. You'll notice from this picture here, uh, we, got a, we got a cell actually bursting. And we notice that these arrows tell us that in a hypotonic solution, water is actually going to move into the cell. So if we slide down here to my real cell, if we describe this environment around the cell as being hypotonic, I told you hypo means low. It means there's a low amount of solute in this environment, which means what is high? the water level is high. So if the water level is higher there and it's lower concentration inside the cell, water is going to move into the cell, causing the cell to swell. So in a hypotonic solution, water is going to move into the cell, causing that cell to swell. 
And then our final one over here to the right is an isotonic solution. And all you got to remember here is iso means equal. And so if something is equal, is there any need for move? No, there's not a high, there's not a low. So there's not going to be any diffusion or we'll say a net gain of water molecules moving in and out of the cell. So if we slide over here to my, my real picture of my cell, it'd be like if we said there's a 50% concentration of water outside the cell, but there's also a 50% concentration of water inside the cell, which means this is an isotonic solution around the cell, which means it's equal. So there's going to be zero net gain. Water molecules will move in and out, but there'll be no net gain of water molecules moving in and out. And so the cell's not going to swell. It's not going to shrivel. It's kind of in that homeostatic state there. Uh, and so isotonic means equal, no net gain of movement at all. All right. So just to finish up with passive transport, the main thing to understand here is that molecules want to move from areas where they're highly concentrated into areas where their low, lower concentrations are occurring. All right, and no energy is needed for that to happen. And one last thing I want to bring out here is this. When molecules are too large to pass through the phospholipid bilayer, they will use the use of these transport proteins, and they, we call this facilitated diffusion, meaning because they're having to get the help of this protein, or this protein is facilitating or helping these molecules pass through the cell membrane, we call it facilitated diffusion. Still, no energy needed for that to happen. So I'm Coach Boydston. That was passive transport. Hopefully that was beneficial. You have a good day.